Hi everyone, it's Simon here, and I'd like to welcome to this session, which is an introduction to Wufoo. Now you might remember from the session on customer information that one of the services I mentioned that can help us collect data is Wufoo. Um, it's an online form building service, and uh, we're gonna take a bit more of a uh, look at it now. The aim of this session is to familiarize you with the Wufoo product. It's also to digitally hold your hand and walk you through step by step the process of building your first form. Now, before we do that, uh, a bit of Wufu trivia. The name Wufu um, derives from uh, both the Foo Fighters and the Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, apparently the founders of this company loved both those bands and they loved them so much they wanted to immortalize them in the name of their company. Okay, so let's start by opening a web browser. Uh, you'll notice that my page just looks a little bit different. I've hidden my address bar, but it's just up here. The address we want is wufu.com. Uh, now here you've got a couple of options. Um, if you don't yet have an account, just hit this option here to sign up for free. Uh, I have an account already, so let's open that one now. Okay, enter your account details and hit login. Now when you log in, you'll be greeted with this page, which is basically, it's our Wufu dashboard. Now you'll see that uh, we don't have any forms there yet. Uh, we aren't going to make one just yet. Uh, first, I want to introduce you to some of the options across the top of the page here. So firstly, forms. So this is the tab where it shows us our forms. We have no forms yet. Uh, well, there'll be something there soon. Moving along to reports. This is the area where we can build reports to basically give us more insight into the data that we've collected from customers. But we aren't going to be looking at that in this session. Themes. Now this is the area where we can actually make up um, custom themes to make our forms look a bit more attractive than they do than standard Wufu forms. Uh, and we'll look at that a bit later in this session. Users now, uh, for our purposes, uh, we are the main user on our account. For some of the more advanced plans, uh, you can have different um, users and you can give them uh, access to different uh, forms and that kind of thing. We don't need to worry about that. We're the only user on our account, which is the free account. Plans and pricing. Uh, again, we're using the free plan at the moment. If uh, you have more advanced needs, for example, here, uh, you need um, more forms or more entries per month, then you can start looking at one of these paid plans. Uh, but for the moment, we're just gonna focus on the free plan. Now, in the account tab here, uh, I just wanna point out two main things to you. The first one of those is this uh, subdomain area. And so, basically, when I created my account, it asked me to specify this. I've put in a QYLP, that's the Queen's Young Leaders Program, obviously. Uh, and this is the address at which all of our forms will be hosted. Now, when you're choosing your own, try and pick something which is um, fits nicely with your business or makes sense because it will be displayed in the URL um, to anybody that goes to that visits one of your forms. Now, you can change this after you've uh, specified it for the first time. Just hit this button. You get a warning here saying that you know by changing this, any existing forms you have, the links to those will be broken. But given that this is the first form we're creating, or the first, we don't have any forms yet, uh, that's okay for us. So we can proceed. You simply just enter a new subdomain and go change subdomain. Now the second thing I wanted to point out was just down here at the bottom, which shows us what's included in our free plan. We get one user, so that's us, we're logging into the account. We can create a maximum of three forms. We can have 100 entries per month. We can generate three reports, although we won't worry with those at the moment. Um, and these other options we don't need to worry about. Okay, so let's head back to the forms tab and get started with our first form. Okay, the first thing we need to do is just hit the new form button. Okay, so we've got our first form here. Now, just explaining the layout on this area on the right, in this white area, this is basically uh, the live preview of what our form is going to look like. Over here on the left um, are the areas and the options that we use to build our form. So this first tab, add a field. All these options are the different fields that we can add simply by clicking on them. Um, the second tab here, field settings, this enables us to configure each of the fields that we add to our form. And the third tab here, form settings, this is where we can change the various settings uh, in relation to the form. And we'll work through these from left to right now. 
Now, adding a field to the form is seriously, it's as simple as clicking on it. And so we're gonna create a newsletter sign up form. And so the fields that we wanna to add to this form are gonna be a name, uh, an email address. We're gonna ask for a phone number. And that's about it for the moment. Now, if you mistakenly happen to add an incorrect field, such as, say, price, um, it's not a problem. You simply come over here, click on the field, and you've got this plus and the minus here. Plus means you can duplicate a field. Um, minus means that you can take it away. So if you do mess something up, it's not a big deal. Uh, so to get back to where we were just before, come back over to the Add a Field tab, um, and you've still got our options here. So once we've added forms to a field, what we want to do then is go and configure them properly. And so let's start at the top of our list by clicking on the name field. Now, uh, you can see over here in the field, setting, um, field settings tab, it's given us the various options that relate to our name field. So uh, we can change the field name. Um, let's stick with name, that's pretty clear. Um, we can change the field type, but we want to leave that as a, uh, a name field. Now, name format, we can choose between normal and extended. So if we change that to extended, you can see it gives us options like title and suffix, which we don't want, we just wanna stick with a normal name. Now down here in the options, you have a really important feature and that is uh, to make a field required. What this means is that the form cannot be submitted until the person uh, provides a response to this field. So given this is a mailing list and we definitely want to have this person's name, we'll make this field required. The option here is to show this field to everyone or show this to admins only. This field should be shown to everybody that's completing our form. Now, instructions to user. This is where you can simply add some additional instructions. I mean, the name field is pretty straightforward, uh, but if we wanted to make it really clear, we could add something here like, um, please add your full name. And that's all we need to worry about for that. And so moving on to the email field, again, we simply click on it. It brings up the field settings for the email field. Um, we wanna leave the name, I think that's clear. Field type is email, field size. And so again, you can give people more space or less space or more space. Let's stick with medium for the moment, that's a good size. Again, given that we're creating an, an email newsletter, then this field should definitely be required. This no duplicates, now what this means is that you can configure the form not to allow the same email address to be submitted to the form twice. Uh, again, I think that's overkill for this form. Um, it doesn't worry us if the person submits their email more than once, so let's leave that as unticked. No specific instructions for the user here. Let's move right along. Now, with the phone number, this can be a really handy piece of information to collect from customers or people who are interested in your product or uh, service. So I find that a mobile number is often much more useful than a landline number. And so let's change our field to ask for that. Now, this means that we can telephone people that might fill out our form. Uh, we can text them. Um, now, obviously, uh, subject to them provi providing us with their consent to do that. But this is a really handy piece of information to have from customers. Uh, the one thing is, given that this is an email newsletter sign up, um, we may not want to make this field required. And it's, you know, we're happy for people to give us this information if they want to, but some people may prefer not doing that. With the phone format, um, this software is American, and so the number format they provide you know, matches the number format in the US, but we can change that to international, which is going to be more suitable for our needs. Now, once we've made these changes, um, we've got this option down here to save the form and you should do this regularly just in case your computer crashes or the browser closes for some reason. Okay, so once we save, it's giving us the option to continue editing or go back to the form manager. So let's go back to the form manager for a moment and here we are. Now we can see we've got our untitled form. Um, this is the first form in our collection. Uh, we'll go through these options down here in a moment, uh, but for the time being, let's go back in uh, to edit the form just by hitting this edit button. Okay, so let's uh, give our form a title. Uh, so again, just come up to the top here and click. So we'll call our form newsletter sign up. And he will say, sign up to be the first to know about our news competitions and events. We'll save the form again and continue editing. 
Okay, so we've got a pretty basic form there, that's all cool. Um, there might be one other thing we want to add to that, and that is to ask the people filling out our form to tell us specifically about the kind of information that they're interested in. And so we can add a couple of extra fields, uh, nothing too onerous. Firstly, let's add a section break. And here we can ask people what they're interested in. Now the kind of field we might want to add here is a checkbox. So again, click on the field to edit it. Tell me about Now, so here we're giving the, the option for the person filling out the form to tell us about the types of things that they're most interested in. And that might be news, competitions, or events. Now, given that this is a newsletter sign up, we're gonna assume that people filling it out are almost always gonna be interested in news from our organization. So we're gonna tick this field here to make it pre-ticked here. We're also gonna make this uh, field required. So they need to provide at least one response uh, to, this, to this field. Competitions and events, we can leave those unticked at the moment, and if they want to know about those things, then they can tell us when they fill out the form. Okay, so lastly, let's have a look at the form settings. Now, just working from the top to the bottom here, we can give our form a name here, we can give it a description, we can choose what the language that our form should be in, we can vary the alignment of the fields on the right. Let's just stay with uh, top aligned, which I think worked nicely. Uh, the next part down is confirmation options. Now what this is asking us is what should the form do when our user submits it? Now there are three different options. Uh, the first one is to show text, yeah? So at the moment it's showing this message here, uh, which reads, great, thanks for filling out my form. And so when the form is submitted, that's the message that will flash up on screen. The second option is to redirect to a website. So we can specify um, a web address that the forms that the user should be sent to once they've filled the form out. Now, um, both of these options are only available on paid plans. And so at the moment, whenever somebody fills out your form, they'll be shown the message, great, thanks for filling out my form. Um, something you can choose to do in addition to that is to send a confirmation email to the person filling out the form. And so if you tick this um, box here, you choosing to use the email address in your field, here you can use the reply to address, and so I might use my personal address as, um, again, you know, if this was for a business or a project, I'd use my you know, professional email address and you'd use the most appropriate address for your own. And here you can choose to customize the email that people will be sent. So we can just say, hi there, thanks for your, your now obviously you'd put something more interesting there than that you might give them something to kind of you know forward them to your website or something like that but um, it's a great way to kind of um, show you're interested again pop the name of your organization in here or your own name uh, you can choose to include a copy of the user's entry but we probably won't do that with a sign up done now, at the very bottom of this uh, of this part, um, we have some final choices. One is the capture, and so this is again something if you're concerned about your form being filled out by robots. Um, I've never had to use this before, uh, but it's something you can activate um, if you if you need to. These final options are again you can tell the form to deactivate under a certain number of entries. Um, you can only allow one entry per IP address. Again, I've never never activated this option. And finally, you can choose to schedule the form activity. And so this can be useful when you want the form to stop accepting submissions after a certain t date or time. So when we often use this is if we're using a form for entrants to upload something for a competition and the deadline might be a particular time on a date, then we tell the form to stop accepting submissions after that time. Okay, so let's save the form and we'll go back to the form manager.
Okay, so just to show you some of the other options here in relation to the form. And so we've already looked at edit, that's where we go to edit our form. Entries, so this is where we go to actually see the data that people have submitted to our form. So if we click that at the moment, you'll see no one's filled out our form yet, and so nothing's been found. Let's go back to the form. Uh, now if we want to see what our form looks like, we can just click view and it will take us to a tab where we can see our form. So this is basically our live form right now. So I'm going to fill this out. Um, so here I've clicked in the name field. It's giving us the guidance over here that we entered before. So I'm a boot. Mobile, let's come up with a number. Cool. Now I'm interested in news. I'm also quite interested in events. In fact, I want to know about competitions too. Who wouldn't love to know about a competition? Uh, let's submit that. And there we've got our um, the confirmation message. Okay, so here you can see now we've got one entry from our form today. Uh, so we've, we're in we're in business. Um, okay, so entries. If we go back into here now, you can see we've had our first entry by me. Awesome. Now um, if you click on that, then you can see the details of that particular submission. Um, my IP address, the options that I selected and that kind of thing. If you want to, you can forward the submission to someone um, by entering their email address here. Um, you can print it out, you can delete it if you needed it to. You can make amendments to it if someone's made a typo, for example, they've put you know, gmail.co or something like that, you can fix that for them. Um, so all this kind of stuff. Click Save Changes. Now let's go back to the Forms window again. So we've looked at entries, we've looked at edit, we've looked at view, analytics. Okay, so in the analytics area here, is, uh, it gives us an overview of where the traffic for our form is coming from. So at the moment it's saying no data was found, but if we see here, it's showing us for October. If we go back a month, um, now we can see uh, the one entry that I've made here, one entry, the page has been viewed four times. It's telling us we've got a 25% conversion rate or one in four. Um, all of our traffic so far has come from Europe, that's the one entry I made earlier. From the UK it's got me right, although it does think that I'm in Sheffield for some reason, slightly weirdly. Anyhow, um, as you start to get more and more entries in your form, you can get a really, really interesting picture of where the people you're engaging with are coming from. Notifications, this is a really important setting. So basically this is where we tell the service what to do whenever somebody fills out our form. And so what I normally do here is I input my email address here. Um, because I want to know whenever somebody is filling out my form. Yeah, I want to get an email notification to see how it's going. Um, you can set the reply to email there. So go save. And that means now that anytime somebody fills out my form, I'm going to receive an email. Uh, an email. Now rules, we aren't going to look at those at the moment. They're sort of outside the scope of this session, as is payment, uh, as is protect. Something I will look at very quickly is this share option. Now this share area might as well be called how to use your form. So this is the area where you'll find all the information on how to actually deploy your form and start getting people to interact with it and give you their information. Now starting at the top here, you can see these two URLs right here. So both these URLs are where your form can be found online. Now you'll see that they're very different, but both URLs link to the same form. The difference is this URL uses the form's name. So our, our form is called newsletter sign up. Um, and you'll see that that is incorporated into the, the URL here. So it's a much more user-friendly, um, easy to kind of understand link to the form. This link here um, is what they call the permanent link. And so regardless of what you uh, call the form, this link will remain the same. With this link, if you change the name of your form, if we called it, you know, um, you know uh, join our newsletter, then the URL would change to forms slash join our newsletter. And so if that link was in the wild somewhere, you know, in an email you'd sent out or something like that, and you later change the name of your form, then that link would break. And so this is the link that will never break. 
this is a link that is kind of easier for customers to look at and understand what it means. And so weigh those two things against each other before deciding you know, which link you actually use. Now, when using a link to your form, this is gonna be most useful um, if, for example, you want to email a link to the form to somebody to complete, or if perhaps you want to use the form on a tablet, you know, an iPad or an Android tablet to actually put that into somebody's hand and have them fill out the form. Um, although there are different ways you can use the form and we'll scroll down to see some of those. So here you'll see um, other ways to share your form. And so um, some are different ways you can share the form are obviously through social media. Uh, there are options here to tweet a link, uh, to share a link on Facebook or to share via email. Those are all possibilities, but the area I think it's most useful to use your form um, is probably on a website. And those options are listed here. And so there are a few different options for using the form on a website. Uh, the first one, here is um, an embed code and so woof is great it uh, creates all of the code ready for you just to paste into your website um, you do need a basic level of kind of technical understanding to do this although if you are currently um, maintaining your own website this shouldn't be a problem now the second option here um, is to a specific option for using on wordpress websites so wordpress websites are great they're very user friendly um, and there's a particular plugin, uh, a WordPress plugin, which means that in order to embed a form, you simply just need to use a short code like this. And so once you have the WordPress plugin installed, it's a simple case of just using this code that uh, the website creates for you. Down the bottom here, um, there are some advanced methods. And so um, we're not going to go into those, but if you have an understanding of iframes or you know drafting your own uh, HTML or CSS, then feel free to explore these options. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is how to make your form a little more attractive. And so, again, we can see what our form looks like standard by going to the view button here. That'll open a new tab. And we can see that, you know, it's functional, but it's a pretty plain looking form. So one option we have is to go back to our form manager and to create a theme, which will make our form look a little more pretty. So here, um, it's given the option to create a new theme. And so basically, all you need to do is to click in each of these areas and then choose different options to change the appearance of the form. This area below is a live preview of what your form is going to look like. So basically, one way you can immediately make your forms look a little more tidy is by using a different font. So you can go through and change. I've got a whole lot of different fonts. Here we go, let's choose Bibas. Um, we can change the font for our description. Let's stay with Bibas for a little more. Let's go, let's try that one, yeah. Um, same with sort of the backgrounds. You can choose a different, you know, wallpaper, blah, blah, blah. So you've got lots of different configuration options here to make forms look really fancy. This one doesn't look particularly good now. I've just clicked a few random buttons, but trust me, you can make them look really good. Okay, so let's go save our theme. Let's say we're interested in that. It's gonna ask us for a name, testing. Cool, so we've got our testing theme. When we go back to the, uh, the form page, if we want to apply our theme, we just choose it here, okay? So we've chosen our testing theme. Now if we view our amazing form, oh my God, it looks incredible. Um, there you go, so super easy to um, start making good looking forms. Now I promise this is the last thing I wanna tell you, um, but this is the most important and useful thing. That's now we've got our data, how do we get it out of Wufu? Um, easy, simply click on entries here. Now we've actually got some entries. Come over here to the bulk actions to, um, button, click that. Now it's saying we've got one entry selected because that's the only entry we have at the moment, but normally it will select every entry you have on your form and then click export. Now the format that you wanna choose um, is generally gonna be as an Excel document because that plays nicely with the other services that we're gonna use the data in, such as uh, Microsoft Word and also MailChimp in the coming weeks. So click Excel, pick somewhere to save it, and away you go. Okay, so that's been Wufu. Um, it's been a pretty quick one through, but it's really easy software to, to use. It's really friendly. 
all I suggest is you get in and start playing with it. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, then feel free to tweet me or to contact me through the program. Bye for now.